Hi, this is Yohav Sapnan Bharatiya and welcome to our uber popular yearly prediction video series. And today we have with us Jason McCurr, SVP of Engineering at Kentech. Jason, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Quickly remind our viewers, what is Kentech all about? Kentech is all about network uh, observability and intelligence. Um, you know, networks are huge. There's a lot of data moving around in the world. Kentech helps companies understand uh, how that data moves where it goes, what to do with it, how to make sure their networks are robust and high availability and performant and all that sort of thing. Now it's time for you to grab your crystal ball. I don't know if it is network attached, if it is physical, it is bare metal, it is virtual, but whatever kind of crystal ball you have, grab it and share your predictions with us. I got three that I think about a lot, um, you know, in the network world. Uh, the first is just the rise of network intelligence. You know, network, the network world is changing, uh, you know, moving into extensive hybrid cloud and out to the edge. You think about companies like Tesla where everything, lots of stuff is at the edge and it brings it back to cloud. Um, and there's just so many vectors where all that data is moving around. I think intelligence about that data uh, is gonna be a, a huge uh, sort of force for all companies because every company is sort of a software company and software means moving data around. Um, the second one, which is really sort of Subjugated to that is the rise of the of the network engineer. Uh, moving all that data around is an enormous challenge. Understanding how that data gets moved, understanding how to tag that data and attach metadata to that data. Um, you know the people who can capture that and understand it and provide recommendations and insights. Uh, I think are going to become really more and more important. Uh, again, all the way from centralized cloud out to the edge of communications devices, you know, oil platforms to satellites, to cars and, and automated systems like Tesla. So I think network engineers are gonna be a force for good this year. Uh, and the last is uh, how, do, how do you bring all that together? It's automation. I think, um, you know, if you look at the last two years and maybe a little bit more around machine learning and, and AI, uh, you know, there's so much data in there that there are two large vectors uh, that really make sense to look at that data. A lot of it's brute force. There's so much data that analyzing all that data is almost impossible without machine learning, without LLMs and understanding brute force problems. And then transformative AI, machine learning, based on things like vector calculus and linear algebra, uh, are gonna look at that data and help give people insights into their data uh, that I think we've never had the opportunity to do before. And it's gonna make that data more efficient and it's gonna offer people ways to use that data in far more powerful ways than they have in the past. What kind of challenges you see are going to be there for the whole ecosystem, for customers, for users, and even for Kentech to help their users uh, deal and you know navigate through these uh, challenges? Yeah, there's a couple of them. I mean, one of them sort of related to all that. It's just the, the vast size and ingestion and aggregation and understanding all of that data. Um, you know, ingesting all that data and then adding metadata to it and processing it is complicated and it's hugely expensive uh, to process all that data in ways that then allow people to have insights on it. Uh, I think that's a big challenge. I think another big challenge is, is, is sort of geographical borders and legalities and politics, right? I mean, you know, machine learning in, in some environments, you know, uh, is very permissive. Uh, you know, uh, I've worked in, in, in Japan quite a bit with customers in Japan where there's a lot of the Japanese companies are like, please just turn it all on. We want it. And then you've got areas like Europe where you've got uh, uh, GDPR and AI regulations coming out that make it much more difficult for companies to make use of some of those tools uh, to meet the, the needs and requirements of the laws. Uh, and I could probably pick 20 other geographies where all of that is going to be equally true. Uh, and so I think the, the challenge really becomes not just doing some of those things, but doing some, all of those things across, across lots of boundaries and vo uh, borders and uh, political worlds and all of that sort of thing. And that's going to be a really tough uh, thing to navigate for, I think, every company over the next 18 months. Can you also talk about what are the things that you would like to see this year, but you know for sure they won't happen? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I mean, some of it's settling some of those issues. I'd love to see, uh, you know, the big economies 
um, you know, all of the big economies in APAC, the EU, the US, LATAM, you know, find at least the beginning of some common diplomatic ground on uh, on these border issues, right? I mean, how, I mean, it doesn't even have to be AI and ML, but how do we move data around and keep users safe? The EU and GDPR is very careful about that. The state of California is very uh, careful about that. Uh, all the way up to some of these broader ML issues, I would love to see uh, the world of diplomacy at least attempt to start approaching even the smallest bits of that uh, so that, uh, you know, companies and economies can engage in innovation like you talked about without having to worry about, uh, you know, uh, backlash from uh, in, in the legal sense. I mean, unless they do something stupid or illegal, but, you know, uh, at least find some common ground so that companies can innovate across borders with their partners all over the world. Uh, I think it's going to be tough, though. I mean, there's a lot of different interests and I don't see it happening uh, on a timeline that makes it easy. If you look at these predictions, challenges, uh, wishful thinking that I call, what is going to be the focus of Kentik this year? The focus is really bringing a lot of those ideas together. We're building products. We have Flow. We have NMS. We're working. Uh, we have a cloud product. Uh, and really bringing those together, uh, we call it better together, with things like AI and ML and working across all those borders. That's going to be the primary focus uh, of our product delivery over the next year is really um, making sure all of those data points integrate well for our customers so that they have a lot of those large insights we talked about back at the beginning so that their network engineers can really tag and understand data and make useful recommendations about it and then expand that across borders. Jason, thank you so much for taking time out today and share these predictions with us. And as usual, I would love to have you folks back on the show. Thank you. Yeah, I look forward to it. Thank you very much. That was fun.